Leo always dreamed of creating a graphic novel, but his drawing skills? <laughs> yeah, not so great. One day, while searching for inspiration, he discovered Flux 2 from Black Forest Labs, a new multimodal image model now available on open art. Suddenly, his rough sketches transformed into photorealistic scenes with incredible detail. Flux 2 gave him sharper textures, realistic lighting, perfect hands, and clean text that looked better than anything he'd ever made. Using multiple reference images, his characters stayed consistent across every panel. Real-world knowledge, lighting, and spatial logic, resulting in more coherent scenes. Localized edits let him direct each scene exactly how he imagined it. Flux 2 didn't just help Leo create his graphic novel. It finally brought his world to life. Flux 2. Create without limits. Hello, good people of open art. We've got yet another exciting launch, this time Flux 2 by Black Forest Labs. And yes, this is the predecessor to the infamous Flux 1. Now we're going to do something a little different today. All the visuals that you saw in the intro was all done by Flux 2. And I want to show you how Flux 2 can help you tell your story. Now getting started, as always, we're going to go to the top menu here and select Create Image. You may have C Dream 4 showing, that's the default. We're going to go ahead and click Switch, and you'll see Flux 2 right here. And while we're here, you may see the banner up here. You see that Flux 2 is unlimited for two weeks for those of you under the Wonder Plan, whether it's a current plan or a new one. We're going to go ahead and select Flux 2. We'll see it right here. Now, obviously, when you're telling a story, you need to develop some characters. So in my case, this is the prompt that I used. And if you're generating the image, you always want to state subject, action, environment, lighting, if the environment doesn't cover it, the context, and the style. Now, in my case, I wasn't looking for anything particular, so I had a very general description of my character. Now, you can be a lot more specific than me. I just went general because sometimes I like to surprise myself. Since it's a portrait, I really didn't have anything for action. So I focused more on the environment, lighting, and the style. The image that generated for me was this image here, and I called him Leo. If you recall the opening scene, it was of Leo sleeping, dreaming of publishing a graphic novel. And to get that scene and the following ones we're going to look at, I simply used his portrait as the reference image. So we're going to go ahead and click here and click on History. We see our image of Leo here. Click on Confirm. And while we're here, I might as well point out that Flux 2, you can use up to eight reference images. We'll get back to that later. Now let's open up the prompt, just in case you didn't notice, there's this expand icon here. You click on that and it opens up a bigger prompt box. And my prompt was super simple. Place the man sleeping in a bed at night, wearing pajamas, remove his glasses. And this was the result of using that one omni-reference image. Now you'll notice his pajamas are gray, just like his t-shirt, because we didn't really state any specific colors. But the problem is we still have his lamp on, right? Now what we're going to do is put this into the omni-reference, basically doing the same thing. We're going to pull it from our history. And my prompt was turn the light off, it's nighttime. <laughs> Plain and simple. And that's how we ended up with this image. For the next shot, I needed an older version of Leo as well as a younger version. And within the prompt this time, I just used older and more confident. I didn't use age, and I'm going to show you why in a bit. And then I just have some general descriptions of the scene that I want to create. For young Leo, I only stated a child sitting alone on a school playground bench at sunset. And you can see the rest of the prompt here. And I was really happy with the results here. And I thought it was kind of cute that he had his leg crossed like that. But I want to show you as well when you prompt for age. So I tried to make the man 10 years old. And I'll show you the variations. This one looks good. I would have used that. He's wearing glasses. In the previous one, he wasn't because I wanted him without glasses. The next two you see, it 
kind of resembles him, but not really. And then the fourth image I felt like looks like Leo as well. Then I tried using 50 years old. And as I flip through the examples here, you're going to see that for 50, it kind of looks a bit old. Now, this one actually looks more realistic. I would probably have went for this one. And this one seemed a bit excessive as well. Out of the three, I probably would have chose that one. But I did prefer this one where he looks like a healthy 50 years old, maybe a little younger. He could be 45 or so. My point is, as I show you the example of 40 years old, you got to be careful with age. Sometimes it's probably better just to describe the features you want, whether it's wrinkles or wrinkles by the eyes, you know, those kind of marks that would show a person's age. But the good news is the model understands age to some degree. The next few scenes is going to be based off of this image. And in the examples I'm going to show you really shows off the reasoning capabilities of Flux 2. Just like the previous images, I used that one portrait image of Leo. And in the prompt, I wanted to make sure that we're highlighting the sketchbook, a somewhat of a bad sketch of hands. And I wanted him to have an expression of defeat, right? And once I got this image generated, I use this as an omni reference. And I also took a screenshot of the homepage of OpenArt. And I used this as my second reference image. And in my prompt, I simply put the man's typing on his keyboard. On his widescreen monitor is a website shown in image two. And we see the OpenArt homepage on his widescreen monitor. However, I forgot to include in the prompt some key details like the sketchbook and his pen. There's also a lamp. What I ended up doing was now using this as an omni reference using the original image that I first showed you, plus this one. If you quickly take a look at my prompt, it's basically just telling the model to place the items, the sketchbook, pencil, and lamp into the first reference image. Now we have a more accurate depiction of the overall scene. Could I have done this in the first place? Absolutely. I just didn't think about it at the time. This now becomes my reference image, and now I want a top-down view of him searching on Google, because this is where he wants to search for some sort of inspiration to tell his story. For the prompt, we're changing the perspective to a top-down view overhead shot, and you see it here. And to get the Google page here, I had to do some iterative editing to change the image on the widescreen monitor to be a Google search page. This whole series of camera angle changes was done by that one image, except for this one in the middle. These two at the corner are different over the shoulder perspectives. And for this one, you'll notice the Black Forest Labs reflection in the glasses that was intentionally done. I miss the detail about the chair being a bit different than the other scenes, but I kind of let that slide. But the original prompt of this image did not have the Black Forest Labs logo initially. That was an afterthought after reviewing things. But once again, I went back to the main portrait image. In the prompt, I used similar descriptions, adding his eyes widening in amazement. And initially, it says a reflection of vibrant colors in his glasses, right? So you see that there. And the rest of the prompt is just describing the environment. Now, it was only towards the end when they started fixing things up that I thought it would be cool to see the Black Forest Labs logo in his glasses. And that's what I prompted here and just inserted the logo as a second reference image. One of the main features of Flux 2 is its ability to utilize JSON prompting, which was popularized by VO3. Without getting into all the technical details, basically JSON prompting is a great way to structure your prompts, especially if you're getting into like some heavy details. But alas, don't worry, Uncle Erm has got your back. I created this Flux 2 prompt coach just for you. Now I may update it over time, but right now I got it working where I'm personally happy with it. To get started, we're going to click on I want an advanced JSON prompt. And GPT is going to walk you through some various steps. First of all, what kind of image you want? There's multiple choices or you can just describe it. 
I'm going to go with scene with action. And you can simply just copy and paste which one you want or type it in. Totally up to you. I kind of like the idea of magical spell casting. Let's do that. Now it's asking me who my spellcaster is. Let's go with a cyber mage. I don't think I've ever prompted for that before. Oh, I like the sound of digital summoning, a holographic creature emerging. Let's see how that turns out. And it looks like we got one more piece here. Let's go with a hyper detailed illustration. Now you can simply just click on copy code here and I encourage you to paste it into like a Google doc or a notion doc. And I want you to learn how this prompting structure works. Cause basically if you exclude the tags, it's really just organizing your prompt in a specific way. So we have our subject style, genre, influences, mood, so on and so forth. And you could even just paste this back into the chat and ask GPT to either simplify it or organize it without the tags and use it that way. In fact, here's a simpler version. Maybe I'll try both and then we'll do some comparisons. I'm simply going to paste that into the prompt box here and we'll generate some images. Another very useful feature they added to this model was the ability to use hex codes to color specific areas in your image. In this example, I've got a greenish color fading into a yellow, which is not very typical for a sky. And we see within my prompt, I put the sky as a gradient, starting with color, the hex code for this green and fading into this yellow hex color. And after some further fiddling, I ended up with this. I kind of eased off on the bright colors and made it less saturated and more cinematic like. And also, as you can see, it can do text very well. Now, this obviously is not legible. And just like any movie poster, you see there are some details here at the bottom. These aren't really legible. If you do want these to be legible, you'd have to put them in your prompt just to make sure everything is nice and clear. Now, what if you wanted to bring your own drawings to life or maybe even your kids' drawings? Well, Flux2 can do that too. Using that image as a reference, I have placed a character on a racing motorcycle, speeding down a busy street, leaning forward, background has motion blur conveying fast speeds, light trails from the motorcycle, rear lights. Now, didn't put the trails at the back, but I do kind of like this effect, so I just went with it. But in terms of the quality and the details, I was very happy with the results. Let's look at one more example of this samurai warrior sketch. And with a pretty straightforward, simple prompt, samurai holding a sword with two hands. He is battle worn and his armor is rugged. And I think I use something like cinematic style. Very simple. Great textures on the armor. I like the little splatters of blood there even down to the scratches on the blade, a very detailed image. As always, I like to cover character consistency, and I wanted to show you how I developed this character, slightly inspired by the Matrix, and I wanted to test out various things using the Omni reference. Now, I did mention you can use up to eight reference images, but I've only tested up to four. First, I created a portrait image of the main character right here. I use this image as the first reference. And initially for the attire, I created the images separately. And the prompt was pretty simple. Lay flat image matrix style boots with plain gray background. I did the same thing for the trench coat as well as the leather pants. However, in my experiences, especially with these newer multimodal models, I like to do sort of like sprite cheese. I typically like to combine either items of clothing or accessories, usually only three or four items per reference image. So instead of using a photo editor, I'd enter the three items and prompt combine the three items into one lay flat image gray background. And I even specify place the coat in the pants side by side with the boots at the bottom. Now this will serve as one reference image. I did the same thing for the sunglasses and the guns 
and combine them into one reference image. Now I know I lost some of the grayish black detail here, but I thought it looked cool still. So I just went with it. For the fourth image, I created this rooftop scene, again, inspired by the matrix. In the prompt, I put place the man in the outfit of image two, posing, wearing the sunglasses in image three, with two guns in hand from image three, pointing the guns towards the camera. The environment is the fourth reference image. So I'm making sure to identify which reference image does what, okay? The other thing you can do is just prompt for the man to be posing in a very basic pose, something like this. Now, mind you, this was a previous version where I wanted more of a roughed up leather trench coat. And then you can just prompt action items for your character. In this case, I have him grabbing him by the shoulder and I'm about to punch him. And then the actual punch here, now it has this weird kind of effect that's kind of cool to be honest. Then I had him kicking this dude in the face. I added the most recent outfit that's more black to this image here. And you see we've got a cleaner outfit versus the rugged one, which I still kind of like, but this one is cool too. So at this point you can see in terms of the reasoning of the model, it's actually very good in terms of understanding what it is you want to do with some very simple prompts. A lot of the recent models, including Flux2, have been focusing a lot on infographics and text. And in this example, I have a very basic infographic of Leo's time frame from age 10 when he drew his first terrible comic. 18, he gave up drawing. At age 26, he discovered generative AI. And two years later, published his first visual story. Examining the prompt here, we see minimal infographic showing Leo's creative journey from age 10 to 28, left to right timeline, four main milestones with the descriptions here, warm colors, clean sans serif fonts, flat illustration. I continued to have fun with Leo's character and made up this infographic of, you know, his work life balance, doom scrolling AI news and actually creating stuff. You could take a look at the prompt here. Now these aren't very complex to say the least, but here's a great example of a pretty complex infographic. You'll see the prompt below here titled why Freiburg is so sunny. It even shows you the moist air from the west, the sunshine pocket protected by two mountain ranges. So you can get pretty detailed and have spot on text, great graphics and complementary colors. You could even prompt for website mockups. Now I purposely did this one a bit zoomed in to show off the text here because it was used for the promo. Here's another variation, but once again, all the text is legible. The context is based on Leo's journey. So everything here kind of makes sense. And for this example, I actually tried JSON prompting. You can see it's very long, <laughs> but it works very well. Another big improvement with Flux 2 is its world knowledge. As you see here, we have a typical gladiator fight that would have happened way back then when the Colosseum still had battles or referencing a moody 90s analog cinematic film for this type of look. And also it supports multi-language prompting. In this example, we see it's written in Korean. Here's the translated prompt. This prompt is done in Thai and no, I don't know Thai. I just copy and pasted from an example. As expected, this model can do various styles in the era of multimodal image models. Now the focus really is about the world knowledge, reasoning, how complex you can make your prompt, but there's so much more we can get into, which I'll cover in another video. Now, if you wanted to create an AI influencer or even just develop a character, make sure to check out these two videos here. And as always, until that next video, my friends, happy creating.